If you take a look at the Syria art table, you'll see Inter Milan sitting at the top, looking down on the rest. But the coach that took Inter to the Champions League final last season won't be making a song and dance about this. And that's because Simeone Inzaghi is too well-mannered. And well-mannered coaches don't get the praise they deserve. This might also be because Inzaghi's brand of football is pragmatic and not always pleasing on the eye. But it is a winning formula, so worth a look. He's a positional coach, but not in the same sense as a Guardiola or an Arteta. His inter-team don't rotate positions, especially in the forward line. There's a certain rigidness to his inter-team, and maybe this is the thing that makes them hard to beat. Their attack starts with their defence, and with an average so far of just 0.3 goals per game conceded, they have the tightest defence in the league. So how do they do it? One reason for Inter's even tighter defence this season might be down to the acquisition of Marcus Turam in the summer. After losing Edin Zeko to Fenerbahce and deciding to have nothing more to do with Romelu Lukaku, they had two big holes to fill. They needed a certain type of striker to fit into Inzaghi's philosophy. Without a wad of cash to spend, they were limited. Fortunately, he was available on a free and promptly said yes to Inter. Taram's physicality combined with his pace and directness allows Inter to sit even deeper and be more compact than before. It's only been a few games, but Inter have conceded more possession than last season, having just 48.8% so far this season, and they have already accumulated 8 fast breaks, compared to 29 for the whole of last season. The loss of Onana could be another factor in Inter sitting back a little more. Sommer's ability on the ball cannot be compared to Onana's. Inter's compact deep 4-4-2 block doesn't allow the opposition any space on the wings. And in the half spaces, as there are always two players occupying the space with a midfielder ready to shuffle over and support if needed. The line of four is enough to cover spaces horizontally. But if the opposition get too close to the goal, this quickly becomes a 5-3-2. With one of the attackers ready to fill the gap if needed. What we get with Inzaghi's defence is the flexibility to rotate to cover the spaces. When one man steps out of the back four, there's a player in front to drop back and cover the space vacated. Meanwhile, the team keep an attacking threat by leaving space between the midfield and the two attackers for a rapid counter. Only enhanced by Turam's arrival. It means that there's often a two versus two and Turam's ability to run the channels and turn provider is something that has already been evident this season. In an attacking sense, this would be called overload to isolate, but in a defending sense, it's counter-attacking football. Either way, it's a way of generating space in the opposition's half. It's important for Inzaghi's team to maintain these lines of four and keep the distances between players close. An aim of opening up space behind the opposition's defence has seen Inter hold back on pressing. Maintaining their 4-4-2 structure, they block off passing lanes to the centre and force the defenders to play passes out wide. Once the ball is played wide, this is the trigger to close down the player with the ball, using the touchline as an extra defender. In the scenario where Inter have forced the opposition into the wide areas, we will generally see one of Inzaghi's principles. The three centre midfielders staggered. With each far-sided midfielder, slightly deeper than the ball side midfielder. This stops a path into the centre of the pitch. It provides cover for the midfielder to press the player with the ball and ensures that the ball will be switched to the other side or played back. This is usually not the case with the opposition though and it allows the inter midfielders to find pockets of space between the lines. Inter's low interception rate shows that the midfielders tend to sit back and allow the opposition to come to them. Then when they are near, they will press the player with the ball, forcing them to go back. Inzaghi's team score a lot of goals, and his philosophy has always been to get the ball forward as quickly as possible to maximise chance creation. So far they sit top of the expected goals charts, with an XG of 10, and get an average of 6 shots on target each game. So how do they do this? There is no hesitation in hoofing the ball forward if it creates a scoring opportunity. Here the keeper spots an opportunity for a 3 vs 3 and launches it into the opposition's half, which leads to a corner, and Inter can now do this more and more with Turam up front. 
there's a good chance he will get something from nothing. There's real quality up front now, in the way that the front two complement each other's game. A classic front pairing. When Lotaro comes short, Taram spins in behind. This takes the two centre-backs with him and opens up space for Lotaro between the lines to find a killer pass. This sequence epitomises Inzaghi's philosophy and shows just how Inter can open up space behind the opposition's back line in just a few moves. There is a little rotation at the back as a midfielder drops into the defensive line to collect the ball, while the other midfielders cover. He then moves into the midfield to find a pass to the target man to hold the ball up and play a pass to the second striker coming short. The target man, Taram, then spins in behind the Milan defence to collect a through ball and win a free kick on the edge of the box. This is as simple as attacking can get, but done the right way, it's very effective. Inzaghi's principle of leaving two strikers around the halfway line when defending gives them the advantage in transitions, as most possession-based teams build up in a 2-3-5. It usually leaves a 2 versus 2 all Inter have to do is ensure that their two are quicker and stronger than the defending two, which will happen more and more now Taram is in the lineup, and this sequence leads to Taram's goal. The last part, and quite possibly the least important part of Inzaghi's philosophy, and therefore Inter's play, is the build-up phase. More often than not, Inter are happy to completely skip the first phase of playing the ball through the opposition's press. Instead, they are happy to play the ball directly to the flanks, where Bastoni or Dumfries will be waiting to head the ball to a teammate and hit the opposition's defence quickly. If the ball is played to a centre-back first, it soon goes out to the flanks. And maybe this is why their defence is so strong. Inter simply bypass the area that would give the opposition instant access to their goal. So how do Inter create space? They don't. They let the opposition do it for them. And this sequence shows exactly how. Fiorentina are on the attack with a 5 versus 4 on the edge of the box. Inter are strong here with 3 good centre backs. A careless pass gives Inter possession and they are instantly in Fiorentina's half with a 3 versus 2. The two strikers link up with Taram, the provider this time, for Lotaro to slot home. So for Inzaghi, there's defending and hitting the opposition hard where it hurts. How do I feel about this? Inzaghi has a clear philosophy and it's working. With the addition of Marcus Turam in this summer, he can now execute his master plan with even more effect. His pragmatic system will not win him many fans outside of the club, but a Champions League final and with a great chance of winning the Scudetto this term, Inzaghi has to be considered as one of the best.